Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is a collaboration with Fallon over at Moss Family TV. I'm sure you're already familiar with Fallon, but just in case you're not, I'll have her channel linked in my description box below. So as soon as you're done watching my video, make sure you head on over to her channel, show her some love and let her know that I sent you. I know you will love their channel. I love it. I look forward to their videos. They always make me smile and brighten my day. The Moss family is super sweet. They are very down to earth and relatable. They're like the family that lives next door. In addition to their like day in the life videos, which they put up a video pretty much every day, I believe. I think they only missed a couple days. But in addition to their day in the life videos, she does a lot of cooking, uh, cooking breakfast, lunch, dinner, treats, all sorts of things. She does dinner videos and ideas, grocery hauls, other types of hauls, just all kinds of wonderful content. So like I said, if you're not familiar with them, make sure you head on over to her channel. I, again, I know that you'll love it. If you're coming over to my channel from Fallon's, welcome. My name is Megan and I do weekly what's for dinner videos, grocery hauls, and other recipes. I hope that you take a look around my channel and that you'll consider subscribing. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. In today's video, I've got two super quick and easy dinner recipes for you, a skillet lasagna and teriyaki chicken skewers. So let me share these recipes with you. First, I'm going to make the skillet lasagna. I'm pretty sure this came from the Pioneer Woman. I got it years ago. I think it was one of her 16 minute meals. I'll find the recipe and link it in the description box below. It's quick, it's easy, it's delicious, and it's really budget friendly. So I'll show you how I make this, but I'm first going to start with the garlic bread. I'll have this recipe linked in the description box below as well. So let me show you how I made it. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. In this bowl, I'm going to add in my softened butter. Next, I'm going to add in my minced garlic. You can, of course, mince up fresh garlic. I'm using the stuff in the jar because it's convenient and I did not feel like mincing a whole tablespoon of garlic this night. <laughs> Next, I'm going to add in the Italian salad dressing. This is optional. This recipe in particular calls for it and I love it, it's delicious. I got these little Olive Garden cups at the Dollar Tree. Then I'm adding in the mozzarella cheese. I'm going to give that a stir and then set that aside. Next, I'm taking my loaf of bread. I believe this is an Italian loaf. You can use French as well. I'm going to cut it in half horizontally. Make sure to do this carefully. Keep your hands out of the way. You want to try to make these halves as equal as you can, but don't worry about being perfect. It'll be delicious either way. We're going to take that garlic butter and divide it in half and just slather it over our bread. Like Jeff Morrow says, crust to crust is a must. So make sure you cover as much of the bread as you possibly can. And then the recipe says to wrap this in foil. Sometimes I wrap it in foil, sometimes I don't. And to be completely honest with you, whether or not I wrap it in foil just depends on whether or not I remember to wrap it in foil that day. <laughs> Today I didn't remember, so I just put it on my cookie sheet without foil. I popped this into the oven, cooked it for 10 minutes, removed it from the oven. This is what it looked like when I pulled it out of the oven. You're going to sprinkle on your uh, cheese and then bake it for another five to six minutes until it's golden brown and then that's it. The garlic bread will be done and it is delicious. I've got this skillet over about medium low heat, but here in a minute, I'll turn it up to medium. I'm going to add in my ground beef. I've also made this using ground turkey and it's equally delicious. I'm going to season that with some salt and pepper and break that up. I do have one of those meat choppers, but it was dirty this day, so you can just use a spoon if you don't have one of the meat choppers. We're going to cook this until it is brown. You may need to drain it if you have quite a bit of fat on your ground beef. This was lean, so I didn't have to drain it. So next I'm going to add in my pasta sauce. You can of course use homemade. I'm using this Classico tomato and basil. I'm going to stir that until it's combined and then add in my seasonings. I'm seasoning to taste. You can season to taste and use whatever seasonings you like. I'm using some onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. I decided to add a little more pasta sauce. I was afraid I didn't have enough for the amount of noodles that I cooked up. So I added that and then this is a little controversial I know, but I like to add a pinch of sugar to my spaghetti sauces or chilies. I just feel like it balances out the acidity, but if you don't wanna add sugar, don't add sugar. Now for the noodles, the recipe calls for bow tie. I thought I had bow ties on hand, but I didn't. So I cooked up some shells, just cooked them according to the package instructions and drained it. So I'm going to stir those in. 
Then we're going to add the sour cream, which I know that might sound a little bit odd, but trust me, it's delicious. You really can't even taste it. It just adds a nice creaminess. Now, I don't believe the recipe called for this Parmesan cheese, but I had just a little bit of this bag that I wanted to use it up. So I've added that. And then the shredded mozzarella cheese, I'm going to give that a stir. I like to sprinkle a little more mozzarella cheese on top and then cover it with a lid, turn it off, and just allow it to sit for a couple minutes until the cheese is melted. Here's what it looks like when it's done. Here is the finished garlic bread all sliced up. And then here are the plates to go along with the pasta and the garlic bread. I made some side salads. This was so good, super delicious. We had plenty of leftovers and I forgot to mention this, but I have the recipe and my husband and I still had leftovers the next day for lunch. Super delicious, quick, easy, budget friendly. I know your family will love this. You definitely got to give it a try. Next up, I'm making teriyaki chicken skewers. Now, I didn't follow a specific recipe for this. I will do my best to find a recipe similar to what I did and link it down in the description box below. If I can't find it, I'll just type out what I did, but it's so easy. I have some of this Lowry's teriyaki marinade. I bought this several months ago on BOGO at Publix, so it was half price. I have a couple chicken breasts here. I just added some of the marinade to this Ziploc bag with the chicken breasts and popped it into the refrigerator. Now, you can marinate this for as little as 30 minutes, like the bottle says, and that was my intent this night, but life happened. We ended up doing something different for dinner, and so it ended up marinating overnight. Here's everything that I'm going to use to make dinner. We have some of the marinated chicken. I have a can of pineapple chunks that I'm going to drain. I have a red onion that I'm going to chop up, a bell pepper that I'm going to chop up. Now, if you or your family don't like red onion or bell pepper, totally switch it out. A zucchini would be good in this, or you could just you know, leave it out all together and just do the pineapple and chicken. That would be good as well. And then I'm going to make a coconut rice to go with this. So to make this coconut rice, it's super easy. You just need instant white rice and either pina colada mix or cream of coconut and a little salt. I'm going to start out by assembling the skewers. I like to lay everything out. In this first bowl, I have the chicken breasts. I just cut them into chunks. Here I have the pineapple that I've drained. And then I have the bell pepper and onions. Now I'm going to take the bell pepper and onions, add a little avocado oil. You could also use olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm ready to assemble my skewers. I'm using these metal skewers today. If you are using wooden skewers, I would suggest soaking them in water for about 30 minutes before you assemble your skewers. There's real no rhyme or reason to the order that you put everything on the skewers. It really doesn't matter. I'm doing chicken, pineapple, green pepper, and onion, but again, it doesn't really matter. I'm just loading up the skewers, and then once I get everything added on here, I'm going to set it to the side and keep going until I either run out of ingredients or run out of room on my skewers. Now, you can cook these on an outdoor grill, of course, or on an indoor grill pan. I'm using this Cuisinart Griddler. I know I've mentioned this before several times on my channel, but I love this thing. My parents got it for me a few years ago for Christmas, and I use it all the time. It's so convenient. I've preheated it. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of cooking spray, add my skewers, and then close the grill. And I'm going to cook this until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. And about halfway through, I will come and rotate the skewers. You'll see me do that here in a few minutes. While the skewers are cooking, I'm going to get started on the coconut rice. This is my dad's recipe. I'll have it typed out in the description box below. To the mixing bowl, I'm going to add in my instant white rice. And then in this measuring cup, I'm going to measure out my pina colada mix. Add that, and then I'm going to add the water and a little bit of salt. I'm going to give this a stir and pop this into the microwave and cook it according to the package instructions. Now, I have noticed when making this coconut rice that usually it does take a couple more minutes to cook and become fully tender than it does if you're just using just straight water. So once you cook this according to the package instructions, give it a little taste. If the rice is still a little hard, add maybe a quarter cup more of water, pop it back in the microwave for a couple minutes and it will, it will soften right up and become tender for you. All right, so for the 
chicken skewers. Once they're done, I like to take some of the extra teriyaki sauce or marinade, brush a little on both sides, and I just close the grill just for maybe 30 seconds just to kind of sear that sauce onto the teriyaki uh, skewers. And then that's it, they're done. Now this whole dinner, it didn't even take 30 minutes and that included the amount of time that it took for me to chop all the vegetables and the chicken up. So here are the finished skewers. Here are the finished plates. I just took the chicken and pineapple off the skewers. I have some of the coconut rice. I added a little bit of chopped green onions to the rice just for a little bit of color. This was so, so good. And if you don't want to like go through, for a weeknight meal, if you don't want to fool around with making the skewers, just pop this onto a cookie sheet, put it into the oven, bake it. You could also just without the skewers, put it on one of these like Cuisinart griddle pans. You could also cook it on the stove, whatever is easiest for you. Either way, it will be delicious. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And don't forget to go check out Fallon's channel. Like I said, show her some love. Let her know that I sent you. And thank you, Fallon, so much for collabing with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.